So for the past few weeks, I've been using the new ASUS ZenBook S14, which is a premium thin and light laptop geared towards students, working professionals, and content creators. It's powered by the latest Lunar Lake chips from Intel, and the specific model I have here is rocking the Core Ultra 7 258V. And in this video, I wanna share my experience with you guys. I'll be giving you guys a detailed review, talking about the performance, the battery life, the display, and I'll also talk about the little things, like how's the keyboard and trackpad, what's the speaker quality like, what's the webcam like, Basically, everything you need to know. This is gonna be your one-stop shop about the ASUS ZenBook S14, so do watch this video till the end, and with that being said, let's get started. Now, I usually don't do unboxings, but this laptop came in really well presented, so here's a quick unboxing. So the box looks and feels really premium because of the fabric finish. Lift that lid up and you greet it with the laptop itself in the Zumaya gray finish. There is also a Scandinavian white available. Next up is this small envelope that has your documentation. So quick start guide, safety information and stuff like that. Followed by the 65 watt USB-C PD charger with the extension cord. And last but not the least, Asus is also including this beautiful sleeve to carry the laptop around when you're on the you know, go if you wanna take it to school or office. That's included in the box as well. And that's pretty much it for the unboxing. Now, just like every other review on this channel, let's start off by talking about the design and build quality. And I really like the design and build quality of the ASUS ZenBook S14. It's got a clean and minimal design with the modern ASUS logo. And the finish on this laptop is something ASUS called Serra Aluminum. So it's a mixture of ceramic and aluminum. It looks and feels really good. Like it does not feel like metal, but it is cold to the touch. But the only issue is that it takes a lot of fingerprints and smudges. So you'll have to clean it up here and there to make it look good. But apart from that, it's a premium looking laptop. It's really sleek and coming in at just 12.9 millimeters in terms of the thickness and 1.2 kilograms in terms of the weight, it definitely falls into that thin and light ultrabook category, which can be taken on the go. This is gonna be perfect for students and working professionals who don't want a really heavy laptop because they have to carry it, you know, through school and work all day long, I think this is gonna be a really good option. But just because it's thin and light doesn't mean that they're compromising on build quality. The ASUS ZenBook S14 is actually built really well and it's a solid little laptop. The top lid has zero to no flex. The display assembly feels really sturdy. Like I've seen laptops that have a lot of flex but this one does not budge at all. And even the keyboard deck feels really sturdy. Like there is no give at all. And something surprising is that even the bottom panel is really solid. So overall, this laptop is built really well. It does not have a full 180 degree hinge, uh, which it should because it is a touchscreen laptop. But because it only goes till here, there is no wobble on the screen. So you can actually use uh, the touchscreen without having a lot of screen wobble, which is a good thing. And the hinge on this laptop feels really nice. Like it's not too tight, it's not too loose. It's got that, you know, sweet spot amount of tension and it's a really nice hinge. Overall, design and build quality on the ASUS ZenBook S14 is really good in my opinion. And personally, I like this color, but as I said, there is a white color available as well in this laptop. So if that's your you know, preference, you can go with that. Now doing a quick little overview of the ZenBook S14, in terms of IO, on the right, you have a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, and that's pretty much it on the right side. Towards the left side, you have your HDMI 2.1 and two USB Type C Thunderbolt 4 ports, and these support display output as well as power delivery. And as I said, this laptop has fast charging, so you can use the adapter that's included or you can use an adapter that you might have already. And there's also a headphone jack. I wish there was another USB Type-A port or at least a full-size SD card reader because this is you know, geared towards working professionals and content creators. It's not here, so you'll have to use a dongle for that, but that's the ports. Now, talking about your exhaust and vent, uh, you have a air intake on the bottom and your air exhaust is actually right here. At first I thought this was the speaker, but this is actually your air exhaust, so hot air goes out this way. Sometimes the bottom of the display can get kind of hot, but at least you're not getting hot air on your hands because the sides are clean. I like this design, and apart from that, you have your rubber grips so the laptop doesn't slide around on your desk, 
And there's actually four speakers on this laptop. So you have two on each side, one tweeter and one subwoofer. We'll talk about the speaker quality in a bit. Now quickly jumping inside the laptop and talking about the keyboard and trackpad, you've got a chiclet style keyboard here. It's a compact layout. There is no number row here since this is a 14 inch form factor. My only complaint is that it's got these tiny arrow keys. So you'll have to do some finger gymnastics to use those. But apart from that, the rest of the keyboard is nice. You've got decent sized keys, there is adequate amount of spacing between them, and there is 1.1 millimeters of travel here. So even if you are typing on these keys for a long time, like they don't feel bad. There's good feedback, there's good travel. They are tactile. For a premium laptop, the keyboard is good. You've got your function row merged with some quick shortcuts for volume, brightness, and talking about brightness, this actually has a really bright keyboard backlight. So if you like to work in the night or if you're working in a darkened environment, you'll be able to see the keyboard really clearly. The lighting is very uniform. There's not a lot of leaking. Premium laptop keyboard in my opinion. Now, talking about the trackpad, you've got a glass trackpad. Asus calls this their ErgoSense trackpad. It's a smooth surface. It tracks really well, very precise, very accurate, supports all the gestures and stuff. It actually has some of its own smart gestures. So. If you slide along the left side, you can increase and decrease the volume. If you slide along the right side, you can increase and decrease the brightness. And if you slide along the top, when you're watching a video, you can actually scrub through that video, which in my opinion is really useful. And again, a small feedback is that the trackpad does have slightly louder clicks. So if you are working next to someone or in a library, they can hear this. But other than that, the trackpad and keyboard are nice like this is a big trackpad even for a 14 inch form factor laptop now talking about the webcam you've got a full hd ir camera here so it does support windows hello so you can sign into the laptop with your face now i really like fingerprint scanners i think these uh, face unlocks aren't that reliable if they you know added a fingerprint scanner that would have been nice windows hello has been working fine for me i haven't had any issues so far and here is a webcam test for you guys so this is a webcam test of the ASUS ZenBook S14. This is how the webcam looks like. And this is also the audio coming from the internal microphone. This does have the basic features like AI noise cancellation. You also have Windows Studio effects. So you have portrait blur as well as standard blur. There is eye contact and automatic framing. There is no privacy shutter on this laptop, which is a feature that should be there in every model laptop. But this is how the video quality is from the webcam. You guys let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. And that's the webcam test. Now talking about the speakers on this laptop, you've got four speakers in total on this laptop tuned by Harman Kardon and it does support Dolby Atmos. You've got one subwoofer and one tweeter on each side. And these are side firing speakers. And the sound that comes out of this laptop is actually really good. You've got good volume, so you can fill up a small size room by yourself. Let's say you're watching videos or movies. I don't think you'll need headphones. Uh, there's also good amount of bass, good dynamic range, good clarity, even at loud volumes, like even at 100%, the speakers don't distort or crackle. Listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, shows on Netflix, Amazon Prime, content on this is actually a lot of fun with you know that really nice display which we'll talk about in a bit the speaker setup complements it really well Now, since I mentioned that display, let's talk about it. The ZenBook S14 has a 14 inch ASUS Lumina OLED panel with a 3K resolution and 120 Hertz refresh rate. It's also got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So you have extra vertical real estate. Let's say you're scrolling through PDFs or documents or scrolling through web pages, you'll have extra real estate there. It's a touchscreen, so you've got Gorilla Glass NBT on top, and it's a glossy panel, so of course, there is a bunch of reflections. It also has stylus support, and you can use third-party styluses with this one, not necessary to buy one from ASUS. 
and it's a really nice panel. 400 nits of usable brightness, 500 nits of peak brightness when watching HDR content. It's Pantone validated, really thin side bezels, like very immersive display. It's got vibrant colors, deep blacks, it's sharp, it's vivid. It's like a really nice OLED panel. Watching videos, playing games, enjoying shows on Netflix and Amazon is a lot of fun. And even doing work is a lot of fun. It's also got 100% of DCI-P3 coverage as well as 133% of sRGB. It's a color accurate panel. So if you're doing video editing, photo editing, anything that is color sensitive works well on this display. You can trust it. And yeah, overall I had a lot of fun. Again, as I said, the display does not go all the way to 180 degrees it stops about right there but there is very less wobble so you can comfortably use the touch screen without having the screen wobbling and going all around the place so that's that now talking about the specs powering that display the model i have here is rocking the core ultra 7 258v there is another sku that's the 256v 8 means 32 gigabytes of RAM, 6 means 16 gigabytes of RAM. So this has 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM clocked at 8,533 megahertz. This is not upgradable. This is on the you know package. This is soldered. There is also a Core Ultra 9 variant if you want more performance. You've got a terabyte of PCI Gen 4 NVMe M.2 SSD with decent read and write speeds. 5,000 read, 3,500 write. It's not the fastest SSD, but the laptop feels responsive, it's fast, it's very snappy. You've got a 72 watt hour lithium ion battery with 65 watt fast charging support. And there is actually an onboard GPU on the Core Ultra 7, which is the 140V. 1.95 gigahertz in terms of the clock speed and it shares memory with the system memory. So 16 gigabytes is allocated to the GPU by default, but you can change that in the BIOS. And there's an NPU that gives you 47 tops of performance overall. The specs sound nice. The Core Ultra 7 is an 8 core, 8 thread CPU, 4 performance cores, 4 efficiency cores. There is no SMT, so no multi threading. And talking about performance, I ran some synthetic benchmarks, which gave me good results. Like single core performance sees some increase compared to Meteor Lake, but multi core results go down since there is no multi threading here and there's only 8 cores. So, yes, multi core results are kind of on the lower side but these chips are more efficient. The Ultra 7 has a max clock speed of 4.8 gigahertz and a max power consumption of 37 watts, but the chip never took above 30 watts in my testing, which is really good. Results for Geekbench 6, Snibbench 2024, and Blender are on your screen right now. Performance is nice, CPU at least. The GPU is nowhere close to a dedicated GPU, so do not expect too much in terms of gaming or 3D video editing kind of tasks, but it can do it. I did run uh, Valorant and CS2, getting some decent results. I got 250 average SPS in Valorant at 1080p low settings and about 55 to 57 average FPS in CS2, again, 1080p low settings. It's not a gaming laptop, but just in case if you ever want to chill and play a game of Valorant, it's possible here. I also did some video editing tests in Adobe Premiere Pro with 1080p as well as 4K footage, and here are the results. I started my test with 1080p footage from the Canon 80D, shot in 60fps. I rendered that at 50 megabits per second. The laptop took 2 minutes 25 seconds to render a 5 minute clip. Next up, Canon R6 4K footage, shot in 60fps, 10 bit 422, rendered at 240 megabits per second, 5 minute clip. The laptop took 6 minutes and 10 seconds to render that. Last but not least, the Sony A7S III 4K 120fps, 10 bit 422, uh, 240 megabits per second in terms of the render, and 5 minute clip. The laptop took 8 minutes and 35 seconds to render that. Now, although you can edit 1080p and 4K video, once you start, you know, layering multiple streams of 4K video, or if you're trying to edit 4K RAW with some color grading, multiple adjustment layers, transitions, motion graphics, and all of that, the laptop will start to struggle because there is no dedicated GPU here. And if you're doing things like Blender or After Effects, I wouldn't recommend this laptop. It does not have a dedicated GPU, so stay away from that. If you're doing day-to-day -day tasks like browsing, email, watching videos, office stuff, if you're coding, all of that is gonna be fine. Like it flies through all of those tasks, multitasking feels good, and there are a bunch of performance modes you can switch using the My Asus app. There's a bunch of options there, you should check it out, it's a very useful app. In terms of thermals and acoustics, the laptop does not get really hot uh, with day-to-day -day tasks. So in my testing, the laptop idles around 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. Under load, let's say you are 
maybe editing a video or a bunch of apps are open at the same time you're doing some heavy task it hovers between 65 to 75 degrees celsius and in my prime 95 stress test with small workers i got a max temperature of 96 degrees but you're not going to get anywhere near that in your use case that's just synthetic testing which pushes the chip all cores at 100% max load to get that kind of temperature. And the fan is also very quiet. Like most of the time, I couldn't hear the laptop. The only time I really heard it was when I was trying to, you know, play back 4K raw footage on this laptop. Other than that, the fan was very quiet. And here is a fan noise test at max load. In terms of connectivity on the ZenBook S14, you have Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, which is the latest for both. I was able to get really strong, fast, stable Wi-Fi speeds. I was able to get the full bandwidth of my internet connection and Bluetooth also works great. So in terms of connectivity, there are no issues. Now talking about battery life, for Lunar Lake laptops, that's a big highlight. These chips are really efficient and in mixed use, I was able to get eight to 10 hours of battery life. So that includes email and browsing, installing apps, copying files from here and there to test the laptop. I was also doing photo editing, video editing in the Adobe apps. I was able to get eight to 10 hours of battery life, like really nice battery life in my opinion for a laptop of this caliber. And if you are a light user, you can get 10 to even 14 hours of battery life. If you're just doing email, browsing, video playback, it's very efficient at video playback. So you're gonna get good battery life no matter what kind of user you are. It's a 72 watt hour lithium ion cell, which can be fast charged from zero to 60 under 15 minutes with that 65 watt PD charger, which is included in the box. You can also use your own adapter. It's not necessary to use that, but that's battery life. And coming to my conclusion, the Asus ZenBook S14 for $1,300 in the US or 1.5 lakh in India is a good laptop. It's got really nice potential. It's got nice battery life. It's got a nice display, the keyboard and trackpad, the design and build quality. Overall, everything is really good. Uh, the GPU performance is not that great. So if you are looking for a gaming laptop or a laptop that has a dedicated GPU, this is not it. But if you're looking for a student laptop or a work laptop for office, I think this is a great option. It's gonna be perfect for people who are looking for a compact thin and light laptop that's also powerful, that has a really nice display, that can last very long, has good speakers, has a decent webcam, decent trackpad and keyboard experience. It's a complete overall package, the ZenBook S14 in my opinion. I'll leave links down below so you guys can check it out. If you have any questions or queries, do let me know in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer those. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out.